Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight we have a story about a young man who goes to the state of Washington. While there, he goes on a mountain bike trip. And during this trip, he has something extremely terrifying happen to him. Also, we are camping out tonight in the Mount Rose area of Nevada here. And we're gonna be having a good time cooking a dinner and drinking a beer, so that's next. Okay, so for tonight's beer, we have a Hopnosis IPA by Firestone. And that came from my cooler. We are up at 9,300 feet on Mount Rose and Lake Tahoe. There we go. Lake Tahoe is that way. You can see it, but uh, this looks really good. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, so I'm camping out tonight. This campground closes in just a few days this weekend. And the, I talked to Andrew, the campground host, and he said they got a little dusting of snow this last week up here. <laughs> with the rain and then up here they had a dusting of snow one night so pretty wild so back in 2009 a young man made a trip to Paulsbo, washington to see his sister his sister had been going through a divorce and he wanted to show support to her and her eight-year-old son. And Paulsbo, Washington is a really interesting little town. It's on the Puget Sound. It's west of the Puget Sound, which is west of Seattle. And then west of there is Olympic National Park, which is on the coast of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and Paulsbo is a it has about 10,000 people in it. It's forested around it, and it has a, a very strong Scandinavian culture. They really identify with Scandinavia, and they have some history with Scandinavia. And I can really connect with that. I'm from Minnesota, and I have Swedish heritage in my family, and that's really interesting for me. It looks like a really cool little town. So he went to this small town to be with his sister and he remembered it was spring break because his sister went to pick up her son from school and he was going to be done with school for the whole week. And he thought this would be a good opportunity to take a mountain bike and take a ride through the forest and head down towards Liberty Bay. And Greg was really enjoying this ride. Just the large ferns and the vegetation and the, the forest. And it was pretty dark in there compared to the bright day outside of the forest. And he really was really enjoying it. It was a serene forest that he remembered. And at one point he came up over a hill and then kind of dropped down. And he noticed off the trail, about 30 feet down, next to a creek, he thought he saw a really large black bear. 
And they remembered, he thought it was just this big black bear. And it, and it was strange because it was almost too big to be a black bear. And it was definitely not a grizzly bear because it was so black. And then he realized after this black bear stood up slowly while after it was squatting next to the creek and it turned towards Greg and stared at him. And he realized how large this thing was. It was huge. All covered in black hair, standing on its hind legs. And Greg made eye contact with this thing. He said he was entranced, almost mesmerized by staring at the face of this thing. And he remembered the face was human and ape at the same time, and yet it was neither. It was like it was its own thing, completely different. Really strange, hard, hard to describe. And he was staring at this thing and he would, in just a few moments, regret stopping and looking at this thing. And he thought maybe he had some confidence because he was on his mountain bike and he was moving along really fast and he was just kind of confidently looking down this s small slope towards this creek at this creature. And he was looking at its face and he also noticed it was extremely muscular. Imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 70s and 80s in his prime, but covered in dark black hair or fur. <laughs> he wasn't even sure what it was. What and he noticed the muscle definition even under all of this hair. And it was while he was noticing this, he looked back at the face and he could tell that this creature was not happy that he was there, let alone staring right at him. And this creature, he could see the brow on it was pointing down like a furrowed brow and the eyes were dark dark eyes and it 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 opened its lips enough to reveal two rows of chipped cracked teeth and then it snarled growled at him Something like, but much louder. And at that moment, this sense of absolute fear overtook his body. He wasn't sure how long he had been staring at this thing, but he knew he needed to leave. And soon as he put his feet to the pedals, this creature appeared to charge him. And he was overcome with so much fear, he was surprised he did not break his chain with the force that he put on the pedals to try and leave the area. And as soon as he got the bike moving and trying to get some momentum, he could hear the creature coming through the brush from the creek up behind him. And he kept pedaling as fast as he could, as hard as he could, down this winding trail through the forest. He could hear the creature behind him, running. And it wasn't a half a mile before he decided to finally look over his shoulder when he thought he had maybe eluded it. And he saw, he saw the creature still there pursuing him. Like it definitely wanted him out of the forest. And he was just overwhelmed with fear 
and he just kept biking and he finally came to this point in the trail where it went up a rise and it dropped down. He was able to get some really good speed from this hill and he pedaled as he went down this hill and he was amazed that he didn't just go off the trail and hit a tree or something. It was, it was, he was going so fast at this point. And he was also amazed how narrow this trail was and how wide this creature was that it was able to follow him for as long as it did. He finally got near the bottom of this hill and it was quiet and he stopped and he looked and he could see nothing else. Caught his breath and started pedaling and he was just thinking and amazed how fast this thing was, how large it was and yet how fast and almost quiet that it was following him. And soon as he thought he was in the clear, he started hearing wood knocks. A whole symphony of wood knocks in all directions. He couldn't pinpoint the sound, but these, what, what he would actually later learn were wood knocks, tree knocks. And that was followed by this like a chorus of screeches and howls. Again, he couldn't figure out which direction. It was just echoing. Crazy sounds. It was just terrifying. And it reminded him of a pack of hyenas that he'd seen on the Discovery Channel. And this almost sinister like laughing, howling at the same time. Just <laughs> creepy. Absolutely creepy and frightening. <laughs> Completely frightening. And he kept pedaling as fast as he could just to leave this forest and get out of there. And it was about five more minutes before he got back up on the road, caught his breath again, and he was so relieved that he was not in the forest anymore and that he was still alive. He, he thought that this might be it, that he'd be one of those missing people because this was not just one Sasquatch or creature or whatever this was. It was a whole, I don't know, community of them possibly. He went back to his sister's place and for the rest of that trip, he just wasn't the same. He just wasn't himself. He was anxious and really confused about what he experienced. And he didn't feel even comfortable enough to tell his sister about what had happened to him in that forest for two years. And he finally told her, and his sister mentioned she knew something was up. She remembered that day and how it, from that point forward, the rest of the trip, he had kind of changed. He was quieter, not as interactive with them. And she also told Greg that she had a friend that had a similar experience. <laughs> and so they kind of connected over the saying they were on the same page and she didn't ridicule him or anything. And plus this is where she lived. And so he's just telling her, right, this happened and it happened in your community, you know, in the forest around your community. But he always remembered that this day that he had mountain biking through the forest started off just so serene and so beautiful, just a beautiful day. And it just ended, it ended okay. He survived, but it was such a strange and creepy experience that he had. And that's what he always remembered that day 
in Polesbo, Washington in 2009. And that is my story for tonight. <laughs> wow, I look kind of sinister tonight, don't I? <laughs> got the fire going here. This fire has been really nice to have. I got to say, it's not like it's cold, ice cold, you know, well below freezing or anything, but it's got to be below 40 right now. My hands are really cold right now, really kind of stiff. <laughs> but I brought my uh, zero degree bag. I'm really happy I did that. And we are going to go cook a steak, baked potato, and some broccoli, and that is going to be my dinner. So let's go do that. All right, we got a sirloin steak center cut. Is what we got here. That looks really good. Wow, that's a lot thicker than I thought it was gonna be. And some broccoli, and I have a notebook with a vinyl outside on it that we're gonna cut on. So we're <laughs> doing my broccoli. My cutting board is in the car, and I just don't feel like hiking back to get it. I'm a little, little ways away from the car, probably a half a block or something. So we will make do here. There, let's cut these in half too now. Get these veggies on right away. Sizzling. This thing started like that, so. There we go, perfect, see? There we go. You go knife and fork set. I really like this. This thing is uh, snapped together really nicely. Look at that. Our fork and spoon and knife combo. And then it fits inside like that, and then snaps back like that. And it becomes an extended, let's see if I can do this correctly. There we go. There. An extended spoon for when you're eating out of the uh, dehydrated meals like that. Isn't that cool? All right, we are ready to eat here. All right, doesn't look good. <laughs> Steak, fried potatoes, broccoli. Can't do any better than that. All right, cheers. All right, that was a really good meal. I really enjoyed that. And the fire is really helping me out here. It's keeping me nice and warm. And I'm having a good time tonight. I wanted to mention, when I went up to Ebbets Pass in a video, just a couple of videos back, and I did that day hike, I was up there near a pond below that uh, lava butte. And when I left the pond to head up to have my coffee up that small ridge, I was looking at deer tracks uh, because I'd seen a lot of deer tracks and, the, and then I was, my eye was looking on the ground and I found a human-like footprint, really pretty good size, in the loose sandy soil. And I thought, that's really interesting. It's really rough ground up there. There's sagebrush, sharp rock, 
and I was at least a quarter mile way back there and there's no trail and this human like footprint um, I took some video of it and I got back home I had no video footage I don't know if I did not hit the record button and I thought I did but regardless I got a couple of uh, photos from my cell phone and it's really pretty good size it's human like and it's old you can see the sand and is kind of filled in a little bit around the edge but you can definitely see the shape of it so just thought I'd mention that really interesting uh, little find up at Abbott's Pass there 8730 feet high uh, where the road goes over there so all right I am going to be turning in and we will see you guys in the morning for some coffee and we're going to get a sunrise over on Mount Rose over my right shoulder here in the morning so all right see you in the morning Not have any trouble last night with bears, so and these bear boxes look great. All right, you guys, that was fun. Appreciate you guys watching. If you do like stories about the strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, please like and subscribe. You guys know how to do that. And uh, always appreciate your comments. And we'll see you next time. Keep hiking.